The BRSCC BMW Compact Cup is brought to you by Nankang Tires and Gas Shops. Welcome to the final of the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. Now we already know the season's been wrapped up by Stephen Daly after being found the 2018 championship winner at Bruxton last time. But Matt Parks has put it on pole as you can see and the championship has been non-stop action this year and I'm sure this weekend isn't going to let us down. So we're going to jump straight into the race one and hand it over to Andy McEwen. Yeah, thanks Lindsay. Well with the title wrapped up, Donington Park is now the stage for two cracking races to send off the uh, 2018 season. Matt Parks and Stephen Daly on row one with Ian Jones and Ben Huntley on row two. Tom Griffiths and Ray McDowell with a season best qualifying on the third row. Mark Skeets and David Mayer next ahead of Mike Doble and Mike Doble together at the back end of the top ten. Then Keith Towers and Craig Jameson, David Sharp, Alan Caulfield. Oliver Fawler makes his debut ahead of Jonathan Atkinson and Matt Flowers and Nick Edmund on the ninth row. Alessandra Albano is back on row ten with Tim Scott Andrews ahead of Greg Barlow and Aaron Morgan, then Simon Welch and Phil Sharp. Martin Gadsby and Rudy McMillan are on row 13, then Jim Barrett and Adrian Pace on the 14th row. Craig Arkell and Jason Bagley on row 15, whilst Andrew Woodbine rounds out the modest 31 car grid for this final round of the season. The grid sizes have been hugely impressive all year long, and so too has the racing. What does Donington Park have in store for us? The lights go out and away we go with Matt Parks on the pole position, Rob Morgan, Stephen Daly, who started second and gets his nose in front down towards Redgate Corner, but on the outside line, is that the place to be? Matt Parks is going to try and stay with him on the inside, but Daly has the momentum and goes through. So Stephen Daly, the champion elect, finds himself in the lead of the race. Now, Stephen Daly didn't have to race here at Donington Park. He could have stayed at home, stayed out of trouble, and wrapped up the title without ever setting foot here at the uh, Donington Park circuit. However, he wanted to come out here. He wanted to come and try and win the last couple of races and have some fun. Well, that's one way of having fun, I suppose. Rally crossing his way out of the old hairpin. Stephen Daly just wants, he's a pure racer. He wants to go out and win every race that he can, even though the championship's already wrapped up. There are two more winners' trophies to be collected, and he would very much like, uh, like to add them both to his mantelpiece back at home. Parks, it is, though, has got back into the lead as a result of that moment for uh, Daly down at the old hairpin. There's Tom Griffiths, winner last time out at Thruxton, took his first ever victory in the championship. And he is uh, trying to work his way up towards the top five through uh, Coppice Corner. Got a glimpse of the black and pink car of Ray McDowell, who has dropped back slightly now from his uh, sixth place starting position. He's not that far in front of this man, Alan Caulfield, in the Jigsaw Marquis car, running his way down the exhibition straight. Side by side battle here, though. That's Griffiths on the inside line. I think that was David May to the outside of him as they dropped down into the chicane for the first time. Stephen Daly, though, well and truly a part of this lead squabble with Ben Huntley there third and Ian Jones in fourth position on board with Aaron Morgan now, who's going door to door with several cars and wing mirror to wing mirror, quite literally, as they come out of the uh, chicane. That was Simon Welch that he traded in paint with there. No real damage done though, just good hard racing. And Morgan it is who goes through. In fact, Welch has been delayed in all of that. And I think that's Jim Barrett on the left hand side, the Raw Motorsport car. Welch is very late on the brakes there. That was ambitious, and he may have even got back up the inside of Aaron Morgan as a result of that. There is Mark Skeets. He's uh, dicing away down the uh, hill with uh, is that Craig James. I think it is the 82 car that Skeets just went ahead of. So the yellow and black car picking up one position, then it's McDowell, then it's uh, Keith Towers, who we haven't seen much of in the second half of the year. This is for second place. It's all getting very exciting now because Stephen Daly in the process of fending off Ben Huntley has actually allowed Ian Jones to join in this battle. Jones briefly goes third, gets his nose in front, and Stephen Daly goes for the race lead. Daly is through. What happened there? Matt Parks was leading the way, and suddenly Daly, whilst at one moment it looks like he was defending second position, ends up actually diving up the inside and taking the race lead away. So Daly leads the way now. Huntley second, third place for Ian Jones. 
and, well, turning to fourth position for Matt Parks. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Griffiths is fifth, and then David May, by the looks of it, in sixth position. That now leaves us with a three-car fight for the lead, with Daly, Huntley and Jones having escaped slightly from Matt Parks, as a result of Parks being delayed there. Whether he made a mistake which opened the door for Daly, I'm not entirely sure, but either way, it is the Scotsman that goes through. He leads the race here, the penultimate round of the championship. Down the hill towards Redgate they go. Ben Huntley, though, in behind him. And uh, Ben looking for his first ever victory still in the championship. He's twice been on the podium this year, uh, but has not yet been able to take that elusive first victory. This could be one of his best opportunities to do so. He's right with Daly. They go down the hill. Ian Jones in behind them. You can see that it's quite damp offline. We had some overnight and indeed morning rain here at Donington Park. Qualifying took place in fairly damp conditions. Uh, but the track is now pretty much bone dry. The autumnal sun is starting to shine on the Donington Park National Circuit this weekend. So, drive track, high speeds, great racing, as ever we see in the Rankin Tires BMW Compact Cup, particularly it would seem on the high speed circuits. We saw Tuxton last time out produce some great racing. Donington is also producing good racing, with Ben Huntley there almost producing a race leading move. He went to the outside of Stephen Daly, but at McLean's, that's not the place to be. It opens the door as a result for Ian Jones to go through into second, and Jones does go into second place. As long as he doesn't want a wider coppice, which he doesn't will go through. This has brought Matt Parks back onto their tail. And Tom Griffiths is not a million miles back either, so it's very nearly a five-car train for the lead. Ian Jones flashing his lights at Stephen Daly. I'm coming for you, uh, says the double race victor from Alton Park earlier on in the season. Ian Jones, they were his only two wins of the year, but he's seven times been on the podium. Stephen Daly, meanwhile, has had ten podium finishes this year from ten races entered. It's been a remarkable season for the defending champion, if anything, even more dominant in that respect than uh, he was the previous year. That is uh, proven, in a way, by the fact that he's wrapped up the title with two races to spare, which he wasn't able to do. The year before, of course, the year before, it actually was decided after the end of the championship, unfortunately. This time, though, it's very much been decided by the on-track racing and enthralling. That's been all year. Down through the greater curves they go, then. And Ian Jones now on the tail of the Scotsman, the KC Motorsports one, who prepared this car for Stephen Daly all year long. Ever since he started racing in the Compact Cup up in Scotland, he didn't get a great exit from the old hairpin there, though. And Ian Jones takes full advantage. Look at that, goes to the outside through Starkeys and Schwantz, but that gives him the inside line for McLean. Mark Skeets works his way through, but up the road, what's going on? Yep, Jones has gone through. There was Stephen Daly, he was hung out to dry. And Matt Parks, who has somehow got past Ben Woodley, is now back on the inside of Stephen Daly. There's contact between the two of them, I don't think. Matt particularly appreciated the manner in which Daly got past him there at that same corner a few laps earlier. And now Ben Huntley tries to muscle his way in as well. So that actually delayed Huntley more than it helped him because that's allowed Tom Griffiths on the inside. So the three of them run almost three abreast down into the chicane. I think Daly will hang on to third and Griffiths will go for fourth. Yes, he does. Gets into the chicane in front. So the new order is uh, Ian Jones, your new race leader. Matt Parks is somehow back into second place. Griffiths and, Park, uh, Griffiths and Huntley sorry, are still debating fourth though as they come out of the chicane. They've somehow got themselves side by side again as they go past the start finish line. Just 15 minute races, these Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup races, of course, so they cram all of the action into a relatively short space of time, as we've witnessed on many occasions this year. This opening race of the weekend for Donington Park, no different whatsoever. Out of Redgate Corner to go back down the hill. Huntley has managed to settle that battle in his favour, so he is fourth as they drop downhill. Through the very daunting left hander at the greater curves, onto the brakes, through the old hairpin, the cars sliding around. All of them, of course, running on grooved Nankang tyres which means you can run the same tyre come rain or shine. It means that the dry, they don't have the same sort of grip as a slick tyre, which is great news as far as I'm concerned, because it means the cars really move around a lot, and that produces this spectacular, not only side-by-side, -side, but often sideways racing that we get, and uh, it really is a spectacle to see 30 plus of these things out on the track at any given time. Not the fastest race cars in the world, but they really do provide some of the closest racing. Office, this uh, battle illustrating my point because they spent almost half, almost a lap now either side by side or nose to tail of Tom Griffiths and Ben Huntley. Griffiths still hasn't given up hopes of uh, reclaiming this fourth position. He wants to the outside of Huntley down towards the chicane. Meanwhile, this is allowing the leading three to pull away Ian Jones, Matt Parks, and Stephen Daly. Huntley is still fourth, but Griffiths with the wider line into the chicane might get off the corner. As I said, they're not that powerful, these cars, so momentum is key. It's all about carrying the speed off the corner rather than diving into the corner.
corner like a bat out of hell. Alan Caulfield was doing just that, though, to try and go around the outside of uh, Ray McDowell. It didn't work at the chicane, though, so Ray in the number four machine, car that was previously raced by Joe Wiggin to multiple race victories in the past. Um, he had his best qualified uh, session of his BMW Compact uh, Cup career in qualifying this morning, qualifying sixth. He's down the order slightly, but still getting stuck into the racing is Ray McDowell. So two of these three, and these have arguably been the three, four men of the season. You'd have to throw Owen Hunter in there as well. Owen, unfortunately, has not been with us for the last couple of rounds, an exclusion of Castle Coombe, putting him out of championship contention. But a lot with Owen, these have been the three drivers that we more often than not have seen battling for, and indeed filling up, podium positions come the end of the races. Through the two right hands at the far end of the circuit, they go. Jones is hanging on for the time being. Matt Parks in second place. He's looking for his second win of the season, of course, having taken that sensational win at Thruxton early on in the, in the uh, year. And he's nuzzling his way up the inside of Ian Jones. Got a tighter run through Coppice, but just lost momentum on the exit of the corner, and so he can't complete the manoeuvre. And in fact, now has to turn his attention from attack to defence because Stephen Daly is clambering all over his boot lid. This is often the case when you're the middle car in a train of three. You so desperately want to get past the car in front of you but sometimes that opens the door for the car behind. Is this going to work for Matt Parks? They go to the outside of Ian Jones. They trade paint as they go across the start-finish line. Stephen Daly joining in as well. And they head down towards Redgate Corner as close as ever they have been. On board with Alan Caulfield here through the chicane. Ray McDowell is uh, not far in front of him. They're dicing away there with a Sharp, that is, isn't it? With Sharp uh, in front. Sorry, David Sharp, excuse me, cut on 40. Meanwhile, at the head of the field, it's Jones that's held on to the lead. But Stephen Daly, as I thought might be the case, has taken advantage of all of that to go into second position. So Matt Parks, as I was saying, when you're the middle of three cars, if you go for a move and it doesn't work, then so often you end up losing ground and Parks got the better exit from the chicane, had no choice but to draw alongside Ian Jones, but equally had no say in which side the road he went. He was only shown the outside, that was the only place he could take that run. He went for it, it didn't work, and in the end he's lost that second position, so he took a gamble hasn't quite paid off. Ian Jones, though, is very sideways through McLean's, but not quite as sideways as Stephen Daly was. So Parks is straight back on the inside at Coppice Corner, and this is bringing Tom Griffiths and, to an extent, Ben Huntley back into the thick picture as well. Through Coppice they go. Parks back into second, and that delayed Daly coming out of the double apex right-hander. And so now Tom Griffiths draws alongside. To the outside line, though, goes the number 16 car, the Thruxton race winner. He beats Stephen Daly by a nose on the run to the chequered flag to that first ever victory in the championships. So these two have history of racing with each other. Oh, that's Jim Barrett sideways, and Simon Welch very nearly follows him into the gravel trap. He didn't know which way uh, Jim Barrett was going to go there, and it will cost him only the one place in the end, I think. Oh, no, two, because three also goes Martin Gadsby. But that could have been a lot worse for McLean's. Now, unfortunately, that means we've got a car stuck in the gravel, potentially. That may mean that we have yellow flags out in that part of the circuit for a little while. Simon Welch did well to avoid the rotating car there. While back with the leaders. Down the hill they go towards the old hairpin once again. And it is five for the lead now. You'd have to say certainly four. And if they continue to squabble, then it won't be that long, I don't think, before uh, Ben Huntley closes in as well. Matt Parks, though, had a really good run out of the old hairpin. He's alongside Ian Jones. It's the inside at the moment. But it's the outside when we get to McLean's. Could this allow the chasing pack to take advantage? We're on board with the man leading the chasing pack, if you like. The man in third place, Stephen Daly. He's not first to throw one of the inside of McLean's, as we've seen. Through the right hand, though, they stay in the same order. Huntley well and truly with them. Now, look at that. The top five cars in the same frame as they go towards Coppice Corner. And Huntley dives on the inside line. Takes fourth place away from Griffiths. Or does he? Tom fighting back on the exit. And this is something we don't see that often in the Compact Cup. Back markers. A couple of cars that are about to go a lap down. This could really have an impact in the race. One of these cars, I think, is Andrew Pace. They're going to catch them at the chicane. It's the worst possible part of the track to catch slower cars. And it will potentially delay Ian Jones. He goes to the inside of the back marker. Matt Parks goes with him. But it has given Parks a run. Matt Parks with the better exit there from the final chicane and draws himself alongside down towards Redgate Corner into the final third of this race now as well. What is going to happen? Any one of five cars can still win the race. Uh, Andrew Woodbine, I think that was going to lap down as well. And it could split the Pat Ben Huntley goes up the inside of uh, Tom Griffiths and does now finally complete that manoeuvre. But Matt Parks, look, he thought he was going for the race lead. And for the second time in succession, the outside line at Redgate is his undoing because it allows Stephen Daly to nip back up the inside into second place. So it's now Jones from Daly again at the head of the field. 
with Matt Parks in third. Fourth place then for Ben Huntley. Fifth is Tom Griffiths. Up through Starkies they go. You can see the, uh, the Gaz Shocks banner has all, or sign has been dislodged slightly on the front of uh, Matt Parks' car, but it's not stopping him going for it. He's back up the inside of Taylor. This is remarkable racing, and uh, Parks has gone back in front. So he goes into second, but then immediately seems to slow on the exit of the corner. So Daly fights back. Huntley says, don't forget about me. I'll go straight to the middle if there's room. There isn't room, so he backs out of it, and somehow they come out of it all still in the same order. In the meantime, Ian Jones was also having a moment at McLean's and so he hasn't actually gained as much time out of all of that as he possibly could have done. That was his chance maybe to try and make his escape but in this race no one has been able to make their escape. It's been relentless this battling between the top five. They're a country mile ahead of anybody else uh, but uh, that's despite the fact that they've been doing nothing but beat each other up all race long. Across the start finish line they go once again across the uh, line past the pits and it's Jones still leading the way. Daly back into second place then and it's all going on behind. Three abreast look and that's is that Huntley through into third now. I think it is so Fox could find himself down in fifth because Huntley goes through and so two uh, does Tom Griffiths. Parks trying to fight back on the exit of the Redgate corner and will potentially regain one of those places through Hollywood. This is all just allowing the top two to escape slightly now. The three darker coloured cars behind busy debating this third position. Griffiths and uh, Parks still side by side through the old hairpin, as uh, well through the great curves I should say. And now into the right hand of the old hairpin and Griffiths who had the inside line through the left hander was able to hold on to fourth place breath everyone we're not quite at the end of this race and I'm sure there is still plenty more racing to be packed into this uh, penultimate round of the championship there's uh, Craig Arkell car number 91 who was one of the drivers that just went to lap down I think he's backing off there to let a few more lead lap cars come through but the map markers it's a tricky situation because you're in the middle of your own battle and then you get this five car fight with the lead appearing in your mirrors and really wherever you go you're going to get in someone's way there's only so much the map markers can do so as not to impede the lead runners and they're all doing a good job out there to try and stay out of the way. Side by side again here though for third position with Griffiths going to the outside into the chicane. Now as we keep saying this is not necessarily the best place to be but if you go around the outside here you get the inside for the next corner but neither of them make the corner in the end. Huntley and Griffiths both across the road and then as they rejoin they form a, a bit of a rolling roadblock there to try and stop Matt Parks from coming through. <laughs> not intentionally I don't think but it worked and it kept Parks in fifth despite the fact the two cars in front of him just went through the gravel trap. Back on board with, with uh, Alan Caulfield sorry as he goes the outside of uh, Ray McDowell and on the inside of a back marker I think that was as they go in towards the uh, chicane. Uh, Adrian Pace I think going a lap down that time around. The leaders though for potentially the final time are going through Hollywood and the Craner Curves. The time is ticking away. We may get one more lap in after this one. We'll have to wait and see whether we get a uh, last lap board or a chequered flag at the end of this lap. These two have checked out now from that almighty fight going on for third. They really have lost a bit too much time now beating each other up. So Jones and Daly it looks as though are going to be the two who will debate the race victory. Oh, there's a car, that's Jim Barrett's car, that's still stuck in the gravel at McLean. So yellow flags, you can see the yellow flashing lights there uh, doing the job of the yellow flags. No overtaking at McLean's. So that takes one potential overtaking opportunity away for Stephen Daly. That is, of course, the part of the circuit where he took the lead about 12 minutes ago or so from the man who's about to lose fourth place, I think, Matt Parks, because again, he went to the outside of Ben Huntley at Coppice and ended up losing ground. But Stephen Daly has had a really good exit from Coppice Corner. He's up the inside of Ian Jones. He's going to go through as they're going towards the chicane. Now, we reckon this may well be the final lap of the race. It's going to be touch and go as far as the timing is concerned. Out of the chicane they go. Stephen Daly, though, could have just timed that to perfection. Up towards the start finish line, is there a checker flag waiting? Not yet. Yes, it goes out. It goes out now. And Stephen Daly takes the race victory. So Daly with the win, having got past Ian Jones on the final lap of the race. Well, they, I don't think, saw the checkered flag. They're carrying on racing. Ian Jones just died back on the inside of Stephen Daly. I assure you, the race has finished. But these two are completely oblivious. Look at this. They're going at full race speed. Back down through the grey and the curves. Ian Jones now thinks he's got the lead back. But the checkered flag did come out. That's Alan Gorfield to illustrate the point. Waving at his team as he goes through. Whilst all the time, these two are still fighting away. It does happen sometimes when the call is made late to throw the checkered flag. You don't always realise that, uh, especially if you're embroiled in a battle like this for the race victory, you don't always realise that the checkered flag was out there. These two are well and truly oblivious to the fact that this race has already been decided in the favour of Stephen Daly. But Ian Jones has got himself back through. Look at this. <laughs> They're rubbing nose, and, and nose to tail as they go up the hill towards Coppice Corner. Now Daly is setting himself up here for that switch back out of Coppice, which is what I presume he did a lap ago, which was on the final lap, uh, to take the lead 
lead away. The rest of the drivers are quite casually working their way back into the pit lane. And finally, now, Ian Jones comes back across the start-finish line, but does not win. Stephen Daly won the race a lap earlier, with Ian Jones second, Ben Huntley was third, Tom Griff is fourth, and Matt Parks in fifth. Then it was David May, Mark Skeets, Keith Towers, David Sharp, and Alan Caulfield to round out the top ten. Then it was Oliver Fallen, not a bad result there, eleventh on his debut, ahead of Ray McDowell. Then Matt Flowers, Mike Doble, and Tim Scott Andrews to round out the top fifteen. We lost a few drivers, uh, Rudy McMillan was a non-finisher, so two Craig Jameson, Mikey Doble, Jim Barrett and Phil Sharp also failing to get to the end of the race unfortunately, but it was a great race, a race that lasted a bit longer than planned for Stephen Daly and Ian Jones, but it was Daly that took the race victory. Well, the drivers are back in the pit lane, there is Ian Jones, there is Stephen Daly, and Stephen Daly, I am convinced, does not realise that he's just won that race. Let's, he's out of the car, thumbs up. He'll be pretty happy with a second place finish, but I don't think he realises he's actually gone one step better than that. Let's listen in. I'm a second. I'm a second. What? Fantastic race. No, you won it. Second, you won that, Stephen. You won that, apparently. You, you did another lap. You did another lap. <laughs> <laughs> you won it. it! You didn't see the chequered flag come out! <laughs> These guys, Stephen Daly hasn't got a clue, he's won the race! Uh, <laughs> Stephen, you got out of the car and you didn't even know you come. You won that race! Yeah, I mean it was a cracking race between me and Ian. Me and Ian were just fighting, fighting, fighting for the lead. I didn't see any chequered flag, neither did Ian, and, and to be fair, I thought Ian had won it, but you know, it, it's, it's just the way it is. Massive thanks to the Casey Motorsport team, Neil, Liam, my dad, Everyone that's came to watch, my big sister, Daryl, everyone that's came up to watch this weekend, it's been fantastic. So just thanks to everyone that's, that's participated this year. So does this mean race two is just going to be nice and breezy for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's nice to walk away with the wins, but the top six guys there, it was, it was like a big train and, and you know, it's, it's very close. It could have been anybody's there, really, so I'm just happy that I, I, that I got through it smelling like roses. So, I mean, my main battle with, was with Matt Parks, um, trying to secure second in the championship. Um, it got quite pushy out there at one point. Um, but that's racing, if Stephen got the win, good for him. That was fantastic racing, but you were right there watching it all unfold in front of you. Yeah, I mean, I was in quite a good place really in fifth. I was wait, wait, just waiting for the carnage to happen really, just waiting for them all to touch and to be able to slip through. And I mean, it worked for third. I was sort of watching Stephen Ian fighting away on the last two laps and thought, oh, all right, I might actually get, get another place here if they keep going the way they are. And, Fortunately, they kept it clean and, well, fortunately, I should say, and they broke away and thought, and Matt was fighting Tom behind me, and I thought, right, well, I've got a bit of a gap, and luckily I just timed the move right. I couldn't quite see the last lap board, so I went for it the lap four and just managed to get a break.